Welcome to the Learn True Health Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley James. This is episode 356. I am very excited for today's guest. This is one of my favorite topics, and yet we really haven't covered it in um, a tremendous amount of detail on the show yet. So today's the day. We have with us Art Geyser, who is... His, he's a creator of Energetic NLP. His website's energeticnlp.com. And for those who don't know what NLP is, it's Neuro Linguistic Programming. Art is uh, a, a very experienced uh, trainer of NLP and uh, has many other gifts and talents that he's here to share with us today. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you. I'm really, really happy to be here. Absolutely. Um, we had a great talk before we hit record, and you have some goodies to share with us today, some really great transformative uh, tools. But before we get into that, I really want to dive into your story and, and learn a bit more about you. What led you to want to become a trainer of NLP and then dedicate your life to helping people transform their lives? For me, it wasn't a plan. I'm not one of those people who had their whole life mapped out. I thought I did. When I was really young, I wanted to be a scientist when I grew up. And my father was one of the early computer guys. And I loved science and logic. And, and, and I knew I wanted to be a scientist when I grew up. But I was also really intrigued, even at a young age, by hypnotism and the powers of the unconscious mind and extrasensory perception and telepathy. And somehow I knew there was a reality to that, too. But I, I didn't know how to explore it or what it was about. And I was really adventuresome. And then something happened. I, I graduated from college, or if anybody's listening from the UK, I graduated from university. And I got stuck. I got stuck for years. I had a degree in biology, and I thought, I didn't know what I wanted to do when I grew up. So I thought, well, you know, maybe I can get a research job for a, a while until I figure it out. In miraculously, I got hired uh, by the University of California Medical School in San Francisco, which is one of the top research institutions in the world. And after a couple of years, I ended up managing this research lab. It was all very synchronistic and lucky. And there were a lot of wonderful things about it. I, I literally could go have lunch and listen to Nobel laureates speak. And I worked with great people. And we were investigating the effects of estrogen and progesterone on the tissues in a woman's body, so it was worthwhile work. But, and I'm sure some of the listeners can relate to this, it wasn't where I belonged. I, I knew it wasn't where I could really shine, where I was really using what I came in to do this lifetime. But I, I had no idea what that was. And uh, I had always had this belief that something was just going to appear, and that would show me where to go. And then as the years went on, I thought, well, maybe I'm just kidding myself. And maybe, you know, is there something wrong with me? Why can't I figure out what I want to do? And I, I began to feel worse and worse about myself. And I was thinking about it recently. Other than uh, than finding true love, every great change in my life has happened because of a teacher or workshop. And the first one that, that really broke the ice is a man named Bruce Honig was offering a course on creativity at the student union. And nowadays that sounds really normal. But at the time, I didn't know you could teach creativity. I'd never heard of anybody doing anything like that. And I, and I went to his course and the biggest thing I got out of it was, here's somebody who created something that was what he wanted to do. And, uh, and again, people are more entrepreneurial now, but at the time it, I'd never thought of doing anything like that. And he told me about a, a lecture on intuition. And I went to it and they were selling different books. And on a break, I was out in the hallway and there was a bulletin board and it had flyers on it. And one of them said neuro-linguistic programming. And when I read the words, it literally felt like a bolt of lightning hit the top of my head and went through my entire body. It was like, boom. <laughs> and uh, in my mind, like the scientist in me was going, what was that? And the mystic in me was going, well, that was a sign. What do you think it was? And but I didn't know what to do with that. And I didn't know what neuro-linguistic programming was. I went back for the rest of the talk and I noticed on the table, they were selling all these books on intuition, but they had one book that was an NLP book, a, a neuro-linguistic programming book. 
that had nothing to do with intuition. So I don't even know why it was there, but I thought, okay, that's a second sign. And I, I bought it, uh, took it home, started reading it. And it just everything they were saying really made sense to me. And the people, for people who are, are new to neuro-linguistic programming, it was started in the 70s in California. And the people who started it wanted to know, how can people make rapid, deep personal change? And at that point of time in psychology in the 70s, psychologists talked about if you wanted to make deep change, it, it could take like five years. It was That wasn't even a long time. I remember uh, speaking to a psychologist once and she went, well, for deep change, I have to work with people for at least five years. And the people who started NLP went, well, there's some people who get really, really rapid, fantastic results with people. So they started studying them and videotaping them. And and back in those days, videotaping was a machine that was about half as big as a refrigerator. You had to be in a cart, you know, it wasn't like pick up your iPhone. Um, and they, they developed this whole theory. Um, so going back to my story, so I was really intrigued by what I read, but the one thing that bothered me is, is somebody who did science research, that they made all these extravagant claims. The, the claims are so extravagant. I thought these are just really hard to believe, but, but I was really intrigued and I had to find out what it was. And for once in my life, it, up to that time, I would have gone, okay, what's the most convenient? What's the cheapest option? But I was so intrigued by this. I went, I tried to find out who was the absolute best person who could teach an NLP course that I could go to the soonest. And um, and that was so unlike me. And I, I found this course. It was taught by a man named Michael LeBeau, who's not well known now because he retired in 1985, but he was a, a great developer in, in NLP. And he was teaching this course and I had no business being there. It was a, an advanced course. Um, you know, I, I was going to have to take five days in one month and five days the next month. And it was really expensive, but I, I just, I was just so compelled. I thought I have to find out if this is really what I think it is. And when I went to the first course and I, I know you're familiar with the concept of resistance and if, if people aren't who are listening, Sometimes when you're going to make a great change in your life, all the unconscious programming acts up. So I, <laughs> I managed to severely sprain my ankle the day before. I mean, uh, I think I was actually kind of a little bit in shock and I, I didn't have time to go to a doctor. I borrowed crutches from a friend. I didn't even actually know how to use them correctly. And there was no Uber or Lyft. So I had to take several buses and taxi. And I thought, oh my God, this is going to be difficult. And but I thought, I'm, I'm going to do it anyways. I, nothing is going to stop me. And I, I showed up and Michael LeBeau came out. Well, actually, the first thing they did is they went, does anybody need help with transportation? So I have the rest of the, the week, I have rides to and from. I thought, well, that's a good sign. But Michael came out and he goes, um, I want you to take out a piece of paper and write down your goals for being here. And everybody's writing, 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 including me and really getting into it. And about five minutes later, he goes, okay, you know, please stop writing, take that piece of paper, fold it up, put it away and forget about it. You know, and then you can hear 60 people going, huh? And then he goes, what I want you to get out of this program is what you don't even know to want yet. Yes. <laughs> and that's what, what happened in the crowd. Everybody going, well, yes. Ooh. You know? And I thought, oh, I'm definitely in the right place. And uh, you know, it, it, it completely changed my life being in that program. And then I had to go back and take the, the beginning NLP courses to find out what I'd missed. But that was the big start for me. But the other thing that happened is when I went back to take the beginning courses is this was uh, in Marin County, which is just north of San Francisco on the other side of the Golden Gate Bridge. And so there were a lot of people into healing and energy work and psychic development so people started teaching me things. And then this one woman went, there's this amazing psychic, Lynn Martin, and his wife, Stacy. She's also incredible. And they're going to be teaching a workshop this weekend, but they're just going to be at our house Wednesday night. And I'm inviting people over. Do you want to come? And they'll just do readings on people. And I thought, well, that sounds like fun. So I, I, I come and I, I showed up late and everybody's already in a circle. And Lynn has his eyes closed. 
And one by one, people are asking him questions. And if they asked a question that was like a decision question, he'd always say the same thing. It's like, you know, you have free will. It's not for me to tell you what to do. But if they asked any other kind of question, he would say something to them. And sometimes it didn't sound like a big deal to me, but I would look at the person and their eyes would get wide and their mouth. I mean, you could just see like he just nailed something for them. <laughs> so um, sometimes I'm a slow study. So when he gets to me, I ask him a decision question. I go, well, I'm studying NLP and I'm not sure you know, what I want to do with it. Do I want to do one-on-one? Do I want to work with health? Do I want to work in corporations? Do I want to do this and that? And the funny thing is I ended up doing all those things. But um, uh, so he goes to me as usual, well, you have free will. It's not for me to tell you what to do. And then he goes, but there's something else. And he goes, how do I put this? And he proceeds to tell me my biggest fear that I had never, I still don't mention it to people. I had never mentioned it to anybody. So, and it probably didn't sound like that big a deal to anybody else. But I'm sure my eyes were like saucers and my mouth was hanging open. And then he goes, you don't have to worry about that. And I felt like this weight come off me. So I cleared the decks and took his workshop that weekend. And at the end of it, I could do quite amazing things. And then since then, I've, I've, I've had two empowerments from the Dalai Lama. I've studied with Philippine psychic healers and uh, Western healers and psychics and South American healers. So I, I'm very much one of those people. I take the best of everything I've learned and put it together. So that's my basic story. <laughs> <laughs> that's you in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. That's what's led me to now. <laughs> After that weekend, you said uh, that you could do some amazing things. What kind of amazing things could you do after that weekend? Well, before I answer that, I'll say that the one thing, and I'm, I'll always be indebted to Lynn, but the one thing he didn't teach us to do was how to do energy work safely, mm. uh, um, which, and I think it's because he didn't need that. So he thought other people didn't, because um, he mentioned, he even goes, I don't know why people, you know, worry about that. And it ended up getting me in, tr in serious trouble, which is why I always teach people how to do it safely. But it, 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 the first night of the workshop, we all wrote down a question on a piece of paper and then folded it up and put a symbol on the outside. And then he and Stacy would take turns pulling them out of a bowl and they'd go, okay, this has a flower on it. And then they'd answer the question without reading it. And so the second night they go, okay, write down your questions again. So we did. And then they go, but we're not going to do it. You're going to do it. Nice. So they had, had us pair up. And of course, we're all like really nervous about this. And I paired up with this man and uh, I went first. And, and and it was a great learning for me because since I had no information, I just had to say what, what popped in my mind. And when I was done and I'm thinking, I have no idea if this is complete hogwash or what. And when I was done, he goes, well, actually, I wrote down two questions and you answered them in order. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah. I, you know, so I'm blown away. And then now he's really nervous. And then he described what was going on in my life so well, I started using his description. And what, what he said is, and I remember exactly what my question was. I think it was about where to take things. And he goes, you've been walking down this path and and far in the, ahead of you, there's a fork in the road. And one fork is logic and the other fork is, is more mystical. And he goes, you've been walking up the road going, which fork do I take? Which fork do I take? And he goes, now you've gotten to the fork and you've realized there isn't any fork. And that was exactly what was going on in my life. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> That's so cool. Well, neurolinguistic programming is science and it is yes. totally related to metaphysics and to quantum physics. We can see that there's this level of this quantum change that people can do in an instant that that neurons can shift mm -hmm. and re and create new neural pathways in an instant. So there's a lot of now we can use science to, you know, we can hook up people's brains and, and see that mm -hmm. that this change work uh, we can prove it with science, but back then they were just proving it based on results. 
So it's very, there's a lot of science, but it is a good marriage of mystic and, and science, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And in fact, I worked for a while, and this is many years ago when there was still a Soviet Union. Which in Russia, they do a lot of research on energy work. And these Russians had moved to the U.S., this Russian scientist and his wife, and they they had this energy machine. And I, I introduced them to a man who had brain mapping equipment. And when you set that machine at certain energies, you, you know, the, the man with the brain mapping equipment goes, I've never seen anything like this in my life. I mean, it would, you could put the brain in different states by just changing the, and you couldn't hear it. It was, it was silent. It would, but just by changing the frequency of the energies, it was quite mind boggling. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm, I, I love, I don't, I, I spent 11 years doing research. I'm not interested in doing more research, but I'm thrilled that there is a lot of really good research now on um, healing and energy work and psychic abilities. And a, a book I'd recommend to anybody listening is it's called An End to Upside Down Thinking. And um, uh, I think his last name is Grodin, but, it, but there aren't two books called An End to Upside Down Thinking. <laughs> and to me, it's like the perfect book. It's packed with information. It's really easy to read and it's short. <laughs> and, um, but he really goes through. He's not a scientist. I think he's a financial analyst or something, but he got curious about all this. So he went through a lot of the research and, um, and, and just presents summaries of it in really simple ways that you can grasp. And, and he has footnotes, you know, somebody wants to read all the, the real research. So it's quite an extraordinary book. It's written by Mark Gober, G-O-B-E-R. I'll make sure that the link to it is in the show notes of today's podcast, along with the links to everything that Art Geyser uh, does. We'll make sure all the wonderful links, everything we talk about is in the show notes of today's podcast at LearnTrueHealth.com so that listeners can be sure to check that out. Art, what was the first NLP book that you saw on that table that didn't belong with all the other mystic books? What was that first NLP book that you read? Um. And, and I have to bridge my story then a little bit. It was a book called Reframing by Bandler and Grinder. Mm -hmm. And I got home and I started the book and it goes, don't start with this book. <laughs> yes. so, <laughs> so, I, so I ordered uh, the book Frogs into Princes. Yes. I, I left that out just to make the story shorter. But sure. uh, so the first book was Reframing. But the, the first book I read was Frogs into Princes. And, um, and it completely just changed my world. It's funny how your, uh, what was guiding you was to jump into the advanced stuff first. Yes. <laughs> and if it had happened the other way, you might not have been as, you might've lost interest because in the advanced courses, you got to see more like that's in the advanced courses, you learn the fast phobia model, you learn more of the heavy hitting stuff. And so that you got to actually see the, the change work actually work. So it's interesting that how the universe aligned itself was to bring you the advanced stuff first. Well, it, you're absolutely right. And it was even better than that. My my NLP career has been incredibly synchronistic. I the the assistants at this advanced course were NLP trainers and master practitioners and the people in the program, you know, were all advanced people. So then when I started taking my the basic course is called a practitioner course, as you know, and when I started taking that, Leslie Cameron Bandler, who had been married to Richard Bandler and was one of the early developers of, of NLP and it is completely amazing. Um, uh, she had a research group, her and her husband, Michael LeBeau and David Gordon and, and some other NLP trainers and master practitioners, and it would meet every two weeks. Well, wh when I was maybe even halfway through my practitioner program, they had an opening in the research group. And I knew most of the people because of, they knew me from the advanced program. So they they lobbied for me to get in the research group. And they went, well, there's this <laughs> new guy. And he, he's still a beginner, but but he's really, he's got a talent for this. And maybe it would be good to have somebody who was more naive. So all of a sudden now, every two weeks, I'm meeting with these people and we're developing new aspects of NLP. And people would go, well, aren't you intimidated when you go? And I went, I've never felt freer in my life. I'm I'm the dumb new guy. <laughs> There's no expectations. <laughs> yeah. So if I say something dumb, it's to be expected. If I say something perceptive, they're they're all impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That is fantastic. 
<laughs> it's kind of like the situation I'm in now. I'm not a doctor, but I interview doctors all day long. And then they, mm -hmm. they're so impressed by what I say. And this is like, great, because I may say something stupid. It's fine. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. Right. But <laughs> I love it. That is hilarious. I want to share with you and the listeners who don't know my my experience because I think it, it gives context Please. to what you are sharing. I lost my mother suddenly to cancer. I mean, she died very quickly after her diagnosis mm. and we weren't expecting it. And, she, and I'm an only child. And I was kind of lost. I, I really it hit it hit me very hard as it would anyone who's close to their mother. And I was um, I was 22 at the time. I was heading in one direction in my life and all of a sudden that just shut off. I was depressed and I, I tried mm -hmm. to grieve healthfully. And my parents actually had introduced me to Landmark Education, which um, they copy a lot of NLP. I don't know if mm -hmm. you know their work. And they're they're I great. Do. They're a great institution, but they do copy a lot of NLP. And, and so I'd actually been experiencing NLP all through my teenage years, uh, taking all their courses, um, not realizing it at the time. Uh, so when my mom died, I I had been exposed to change work and to personal growth and development for so many years. I had this idea in the back of my mind, I want to make sure I'm grieving healthfully. I want to make sure, like, I mm. understand that grief happens, but I really want to make sure I don't get stuck and create some kind of, you know, create some mm -hmm. kind of um, vicious cycle in my life because I can't heal from this. So I started to seek out grief counselors and therapists. and And what I found was that everyone I went to... It, it didn't it didn't feel like they were they were practicing excellence because that's what I was looking for. I wanted to I wanted to mm. heal the best I could possibly heal and created the best version of myself, um, you know, after having lost my mother. And and I felt as though they were they were trying to find like sexual abuse in my childhood and they were trying to go Gosh. back in my childhood and try to find stuff that wasn't there. And I kept saying, I'm I want to heal what's happened right now. Like this is what I'm dealing with. Right. And 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 I didn't feel like any of them were really that had any tools. And um, at the time I had joined an advanced course with Landmark uh, called Team Management and Leadership Program. And it's a year long course, but you can do it actually for multiple years and become sort of like a leader at, in it. And then later I was hired by Landmark to be on staff in Toronto. And during that time, I'm, I was still looking to heal. And so those in my course, there's about 30 or 60 of us um, at any given quarter, they knew what my intention was as I was sort of mm -hmm. seeking this, this wanting to heal. I, I was still, I was, I was still very depressed, but I was, um, I was pushing through it, you know, and, and trying to find, find answers. And one of the, um, participants, uh, one of the students called me up one day and I, I, re I still remember it very clearly. I remember standing there holding the phone, holding the cordless phone. This is when people didn't have smartphones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and she said, I just got back from a training and I want to do a breakthrough session with you. In eight hours, you will be free of all that's holding you back. Wow. And, I, and and I'm like, okay, that's a that's a big <laughs> that's a big <laughs> order. It's a tall order to fill. But but let's do it. You know, I mean, worst case scenario, I get nothing out of it, and you know, I'm a, I'm one of her mm -hmm. guinea pigs. I think she ended up uh, charging me very very little money because you know she just she just got back and she wanted to practice. So we did an eight hour breakthrough session. And at the end of the eight hours, I felt like the weight of the world was lifted off my shoulders. I walked out of there feeling like I had completed my grief mm. and I felt free. And she said at the end of it, you should really look into doing these courses. I'm like, yeah, you're right. I should really look <laughs> into doing these courses. I mean, I had to figure, I had to raise money for it. I had to, you know, I had to create a business plan because this was all of a sudden, this was going to be my, my direction. And mm. I ended up. Um, taking the practitioner, the master practitioner, the trainer's training. That was in 2005. And I can't believe the things I saw that year. And then the things I did with other people, it still blows my mind, the things that NLP can do for people. I had one woman who had a phobia of um, being in a crowd. So she, if, she could be in an empty field, but if four people were surrounding her, she would ha have a complete oh, nervous breakdown. So she had, had a very difficult time in life because if, if people were, uh, had a close proximity to her, she would have a, a, a phobia. Uh, mm. a, and, and after we did the fast phobia model and I did, I did it with other students watching so they could also learn at the mm -hmm. end of the fast phobia model, not only did she not have the phobia, she forgot that she had the phobia. The memory, <laughs> the memory of the phobia was deleted 
sometimes when we complete something, it mm -hmm. actually is deleted from the brain. I mean, you know, it's just the brain's so complete with it. So she did, she'd no longer remembered that she ever had the phobia to begin with. And luckily I had other students watching. Otherwise I would have been like, am I crazy? Did I like drop into a different <laughs> dimension? You know, we just, we just cleared your phobia and you're telling me you didn't have a phobia. But it was one of those things where, where you can take someone who's had a lifelong crippling phobia and, and within minutes, it's no longer a problem. It's so amazing. And you feel like so empowered to help others, right? So my experience of NLP is it's like how far down the rabbit hole do you want to go? Cause it, it, it doesn't stop after becoming a trainer. It's just the beginning. And it just keeps going and going. And it's so beautiful. So I love that you were part of the early movement to develop NLP, develop all the tools. And what I loved about Richard Bandler and John Grinder's work is that they looked around at the therapy model in the United States at the time. And they said, you know, in therapy, we're either looking at what's normal or abnormal, but we're not looking at excellence. And and the, mm -hmm. the whole concept, the whole American dream is like about excellence, right? So what is it right. about therapy that's just like, you're normal? <laughs> okay, good. You like stamp of approval, you're normal, keep going. Uh, but no one was looking at creating excellence. And I love that they found and modeled those uh, rare therapists who were creating excellence and then developed the tools to teach anyone to, to repeat the same results. So it's exciting that you have this unique perspective of NLP since you were there at the beginning and helped formulate it. I, I really love that story. And it, you do see so many miracles with, with NLP. It, it's truly amazing. And you mentioned the work on grief. There's a NLP grief process that the first time I, I learned of it, I, I, I was reading it in the book. I, I hadn't even been taught it. And a woman client came in who her son had died in a fishing accident when he was 17 mm. and that had been 13 years ago. And she, uh, you know, she goes, I want to be able to think about him without crying. And one session we changed it. And so I got this reputation about being this miracle grief worker and I, I'm literally doing it like a cookbook. I mean, she doesn't know that, but I'm thinking, okay, step one, step two, you know, I had never done it before, but that's how, how powerful NLP is, that they, the processes are, are incredibly amazing. And I found when you combine that with energetic work, uh, it just, it's like one plus one equals, you know, a hundred. It's, mm -hmm. it, it just opens up more and more possibilities. That's really interesting. Um, I studied with uh, Tad James of No Relation. I think it's really funny because um, I studied with him and then he actually hired me as a sales manager and that's why I moved to the States. And, oh, really? um, so I actually worked for, um, uh, for him for a while. Um, after, after I became a trainer, um, I used, I worked for a whole year doing NLP with, um, with companies and doing a lot mm -hmm. of business work, which was so much fun. Cause I'd go into these, I was hired to go into these, um, businesses and, and, um, do basically personal growth work with the staff, with the sales staff. And the whole intent is to make more sales, but my covert mission was to transform their lives. And it was so funny because we did. And and out of when someone has their their life's transformed, of course their sales are up because they're happy, they're more congruent, they they ha mm -hmm. have can gain rapport with people better. Like they're able to serve people better because they're they feel more whole and more complete and more congruent. So um, I had a lot of fun with that. And then I went back the next year after a year of doing that, I went back to assist at all the trainings while my best friend took the trainings. And during the time I was assisting the whole summer through the trainings, um, you know, a lot of people do assisting where once they've taken the courses, they can then a lot of trainers will allow people to assist for free. It gives them sort of mm -hmm. free work and then the assistants can kind of review all the info. And during that time, I was asked to actually come work for Ted James. So I, I was um, on staff with him and, um, and, th and then I met my husband and my husband has the same last name. So that's why, so oh, of no relation, but it was really funny because then I married my husband and then also I became Ashley James. So I had to answer the phone you know, Tad James company, this is Ashley James speaking of no relation, you know, not, <laughs> not like his daughter or something, but it, it was, it was a great experience. And I got to see even further the change work. But what's really interesting is that Tad very early on saw that 
uh, there needed to be a spiritual component to NLP. And NLP is very, it feels very science based. Mm -hmm. And then he started studying HUNA and bringing in spiritual work and energy work. And, um, and it just, the marriage between the two I saw was just, it was, it was fluid. It made so much sense. And we'd have these doctors and scientists and businessmen come in and they think it's very science based. And then they, you know, by the end of it, they're all doing more metaphysical work too. And it made, it really worked. So I completely understand why there's, there's just mm -hmm. this missing, there's this missing link in therapy. You know, it's like if someone only does talk therapy, there's just this missing link of spiritual, physical, energetic, you know, we're all of all of the aspects of who we are need to be addressed. And so of course it makes sense that you address the energetic along with the emotional, along with the mental work. It makes, it makes complete sense. In your early years of NLP and, and also integrating spiritual work and energetic work, what kind of changes did you see that you can make in yourself uh, that you were really excited and surprised by? Oh, boy, I, that should be an easy question because I've made so many. Uh, you know, the first thing I, I would say is I think both through the NLP and, and in general and energetic NLP, a lot of the some things feel like changes, like, as you mentioned, NLP studies excellence and you can add skills. A lot of the work that I do, I do that work, too, is more like unleashing what was already there. So when people go through really big changes, often they feel different, but they feel like, oh, this is really me. And, you know, it's a little bit like the example of the woman you gave with the phobia that couldn't even remember she'd had a phobia because now she was operating out of who she really was, not out of some programming. You don't remember the old you that was holding you back or those old conflicts because they've integrated back into you and you're now whole. Yeah, it's bad for business. And I was <laughs> warned about this when I first studied NLP is a lot. In fact, sometimes I have people like, write a letter to themselves and then give mm. it back to them later. And they'll go like, well, I know I wrote this. I know it's my handwriting, but I can't even relate to it. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. I do the same thing with... Um, Facebook timeline, because I've been in Facebook since 2007, and I go back and see mm. the things that I wrote. I mean, <laughs> I studied NLP in 2005, but in 2007, I joined Facebook, and I see what I wrote even back then. I have a, I have a journal from high school, but yeah, you're right. You look back 10 years ago and or more, and you're like, I don't... I don't even, I, it says I wrote this, but that's not who I am anymore. So that makes mm -hmm. total sense. Well, let's ask the question a different well, way. Well, can I give, oh, well, well, please. To, to give a one, I mean, the, the most enormous example was it got me from being incredibly stuck to being incredibly free. And it got me away from perfectionism and trying to be right to, in fact, when I, when I teach an energetic NLP program and one of the things that's different about energetic NLP than most energetic spiritual systems is the way we treat beliefs and concepts. So when I look at somebody's energy field, I don't see these, you know, the, you know, you look at the little models, like you know, they look like little tornadoes and they do this and that. And, and I, I can see that if I want to that way, but I don't think that's what's really going on at all. I think that's the way our unconscious mind is representing something that's vast and multidimensional and complex. So I've taken the idea of models from NLP and brought it into that work. So I, I made up a term called beliefs du jour, like uh, like plate du jour, soup du jour. And when I'm teaching on people, I go, these are my beliefs du jour. And <laughs> I'm not attached to them. And <laughs> if you have better beliefs, that's great. And I'm not attached to you believing what I believe. Because in my work, my goal is that people tap more and more into their inner human wisdom and into their spiritual information and insight and knowledge. And so I, I don't care if it agrees with what I'm saying or not. And I'll tell them, you know, what I'm saying is to help them open up their beliefs and challenge them and then find their own truth. And if it's the same as mine, that's great. And if it's different, that's great. And if I like theirs better, I tell them, well, I'll steal it and start teaching what you say. Um, <laughs> so, um, um, so when the and NLP really did that, it got me out of that. I mean, I now realize I was so stuck because I, I had put myself in a box. Um, mm. you know, then, you know, that I I felt like I, I was failing myself by having been in this job so long. So I had to prove myself with whatever I did next. So, of course, there was a terror of 
<laughs> whatever I do next, you know, what if I don't prove myself? And, you know, I'm trying to be right and all these things. So opening up to the, the joy and freedom of, of even enjoying sometimes going, oh, I was wrong then. And this is a better idea. And this is a better idea. You know, not even to say that I was wrong, but this is the next step. This is the next step. So that's been huge for me. It's, it's really affected my health. Um, I've had a couple really big health challenges along the way, and I am absolutely sure that the energetic NLP work made a huge difference. And, um, uh, you know, I, I usually see that in, in my clients and students. Um, I say usually because nothing always works. But um, and sometimes sometimes it's somebody's path to die, you know, and, and that's kind of a whole other story. But um, it's it's changed my relationships. It's changed how I approach everything I do in life. So <laughs> that's why it's almost hard to answer. It's like, what's changed? Like, and, and another thing is people always liked me, but I had rough edges. My, my parents are both from Boston and had kind of that East Coast in your face kind of thing. <laughs> um, and that, and I grew up in Southern California, so it wasn't really a fit. So people liked me, so I got away with it, but I was stepping on toes a lot more than I realized. And NLP just gave me incredible skills about how to be more influential with people and, and kinder <laughs> and, mm. and, you know, to more lead them to an idea rather than smash them for being wrong. You know, it wasn't my intention to smash them, but I was the kind of person to go, why are you saying that? That's wrong. You know, I, not and not meaning it as an attack, but just, you know, like in New York City or something, you could talk like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, um, you know, just learning how to influence other people, uh, um, I, I was really anti-corporate. And then when I started working in corporations and like you were talking about sales, I had the same kind of experiences that, and, and I was shocked. I, I thought salespeople were all going to be superficial and limited. And they're in fact, a lot of them are really interested in personal and spiritual growth because they know that matters. And, mm -hmm. um, in it, and I realized that with more women in corporations and more younger people and, and just the baby boomers too, that, people were trying to get out of the old corporate model. So it was fantastic to go in and help people be better leaders, help teams be more effective, but by, by being more human, by bringing out the best in mm -hmm. each other rather than through power moves. And, um, uh, you know, I've, I would tell people, I feel a little like Robin Hood, that they're paying me to, to change them. <laughs> the only difference is like they're, they're making more money too. So <laughs> unlike Robin Hood, you know, they're, it was working for the corporation, but it was making them more human and, and, um, and more effective. And right. I was surprised how much fun that was. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Absolutely. I had this one guy, he was the manager of this, um, electronic store, this really high end electronic store in Trois Rivières, uh, Quebec. And, um, I speak little French, he speaks half English, you know, we, 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 we managed, uh, mm -hmm. growing up, I grew up in Toronto. And at the time, um, we were all sitting around a table and we were doing, um, we were releasing negative emotions, um, timeline therapy, which is something that mm -hmm. Tad created, but it's, he, you know, you could consider it sort of like an offshoot of NLP because NLP is just a collection of these great tools. Right. And we get to releasing the root cause, the root of sadness. And I, I said to him, are you ready? Because you have, you have to consciously get that you're congruent and you're ready to let mm -hmm. it go. And I'd, I'd been doing this work for a year and I'd, I'd never met someone who said no. Like, of course, you want to let go of the root cause of, of sadness. <laughs> like, the all you want to let, you know, you want to resolve all the sadness inside of you so that it is you gain all the positive learnings and, and you're no longer holding on to neurologically all these sad, all the sadness. Like, of course you want to. And he mm. just, he was stone cold. He, he had very little circulation in his face or his neck. And it was like the middle of winter. So we're all bundled up anyway, but he, so I could just see his neck and his face, but he was white as a ghost. I just kind of chalked that up to being Canadian. <laughs> he just had a stone cold face and he said, no, and I, and I, so I pressed a little bit. I'm like, you know, this, and, and I had already kind of pre-framed it that we want to be very congruent. We want to let go of um, unresolved negative emotions from our past so that when we deal with our customers, we can, we can have be clear to really help them. Mm -hmm. 
and be of service and also be able to be better at her job, right, and make more money. So they, they all wanted that, and, and he agreed he wanted that. But when we came to releasing Sadness, he couldn't do it, and he just wouldn't. There was a – he had a block, and mm -hmm. I said, okay, well, what's, what's going on? Tell me about that. He said, I cannot let go of Sadness because I saw my grandmother burn to death in a house fire when I was three, and, I'm, and I – I hold on to the sadness to honor her. And of course, as you know, in NLP, we immediately think of what kind of reframes that we can use to help them see it in a different way. Mm -hmm. And it just came to me. It was like lightning right out of my mouth. I said, do you realize you've been honoring your grandmother with the wrong emotion? When you think of her, you want to feel love. And he, mm -hmm. his eyes became huge like saucers. Now he was like in his 50s. So he had been doing this. For it was probably fifty three. He'd probably been doing this for for fifty years, you know, mm. holding on to sadness to honor his grandmother, and really tear, like pulling himself down is, you know, lowered immune system. There's all kinds of physiological things that can occur when we are holding on to sadness. And as I said that, and it it registered, I saw redness I saw color coming into mm. his neck and start to come up not red like anger but red like circulation started to come up his neck and started his wow. cheeks got red his eyes were wide and and as I saw the redness creep up his face he said I said okay are you are you ready to let go status and he slams his hand down on the table and he goes <laughs> yes and it was totally <laughs> congruent and so we we as a, we were doing this as a group everyone was releasing their sadness and, and he went back into the memory of losing his grandmother. He gained the positive learnings, let go of the sadness, let go of all the sadness from his past, from other events, came back to now. And as he walked out, his um, regional manager, Mario, who I've known since I was a child. So he's a, a personal mm. uh, sort of family friend. And Mario also is the one that introduced my family to, to um, Landmark Education. So he's he's really into personal growth mm. work. And he watched this gentleman walk out and Mario did a triple take. I watched him look at the guy, look away, they go, then was shocked <laughs> on his face, look at him again, look away, look at him a third time. And he pulled me aside and said, what did you do to that man? I've known him for 15 <laughs> years. I have never seen him smile. He looks like a completely new person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just so cool that, you know, I was hired to help them do more sales. But what I got to mm -hmm. do is transform their life. And I've stayed in touch with Mario. And that man ended up um, changing positions because they had multiple store locations. He ended up uh, giving up his um, his position for a different position in a store much closer to home so he could make a smaller commute so he could spend more time with his children and wife. And what, mm. what it was, what I was told was that he, com after that day, completely changed his life. He, his marriage improved, his relationship with his kids improved, his relationship because he was holding everyone off at a distance because of the sadness that he decided he needed to hold on to to honor his grandmother. And, you know, that, that, that you could go into a corporation to help a corporation make more money, but end up transforming their lives with these tools that, that has a ripple effect. Like his kids now have a better life. His wife has a better life. All the people he touches has a better life. Mm -hmm. So yeah, absolutely. We can go in and take NLP. Like you can take NLP to corporations, but you end up transforming people's lives. And, uh, and so I just, I love, I love the work you do. Now, I'm sure listeners at this point are thinking that they want to learn this too. Do you teach, um, can someone go and learn energetic NLP from you? Like, how does that work? They can. And going back to the story I said at the beginning when I could answer the, the man's questions on a folded piece of paper, everybody can do that. Everybody has miraculous abilities. Uh, you know, the, there's this belief out there that only some of us were born with special abilities. It's nonsense. Um, it's not everybody's path. It's not everybody's interest. But I just want people to know everybody can do miraculous things. It, it's it's actually normal. You just It's just a matter of clearing the programming and things that block us, learning how to do it safely and learning to open up. And I, I lead programs both in-person workshops. I do a lot of online training programs that are a mixture of, um, uh, you're, you're probably familiar with Zoom. Other people may not be. Zoom is this great platform now where you can do 
video meetings and you can then even just like in a real workshop, you can put people in a video room together, like three people. They can practice. They can ask me questions. I can pop in. I can bring everybody back together again. So I've, I've been really the last couple of years learning how to use that. So I, I do a lot of both online training, in-person training. I I do free Facebook lives most weeks. Uh, I may not, uh, you know, at times like when I'm working in London and stuff, I, I'm not always doing them. But most weeks on Thursdays, I do a Facebook Live on the Energetic NLP page. Um, I, I do a lot of other webinars. So, yes, I, I'm, I'm teaching all the time. And it, it, and I, I love – it's interesting. I work with both people that are complete newbies and people that are really, really advanced. I mean, I have people in my programs who've been worked with energy for 30 years and people that are brand new. And uh, we figured out ways to do that where it works for everybody which is really um, makes it really fun and gratifying. That's very cool. Most of the people are somewhat experienced, but like I said, the complete newbies are, are fine. And um, mm -hmm. part of that is because in energetic NLP, when we work with somebody, we always have them put their inner wisdom and their spirit in charge of what happens for them. So not what I think they need. If, if Sometimes I'm putting on my NLP coach hat and I'll tell somebody, okay, this is me as a coach giving you advice. But when I'm doing the energy work, I'm being guided by their inner wisdom and spirit that are in charge. So I can have 100 people in a room and there can be 100 different experiences going on. And everybody's getting different mixtures of energy and the energies are doing different things, um, which is once I figured out how to do that, it just opened up um, uh, the, the whole possibilities of what can happen in the training and the teaching. So. It it's, works amazingly well. I know you sort of just answered this question, but I think I want to dive a bit deeper. What is the difference between, like the NLP that I learned, like, you know, maybe yeah. if someone went and studied with Richard Bandler or or they studied with Tad James or, you know, someone else, and or they read a bunch of NLP books, what's the difference between that and energetic NLP, which is what you teach? Yeah. Well, just pure NLP, if I can call it that, is mm -hmm. has nothing to do with energy work. Um that this one of the ideas that I got from NLP that I believe in is that every way of thinking is both a strength and a weakness. And, and so that the goal is to have different ways of thinking that you can you can change according to the situation. So the great strength of traditional NLP was you treat everything as internally generated. Everything's coming from your conscious mind, your unconscious mind, how you're processing information and, and the stimulus from the outside world. In energetic work, we'd say that's not necessarily true, that we're like little radio receivers. Um, we're picking up energies, thoughts, emotions from other people, and that some of what's going on inside of us isn't us. And sometimes people think that's a little scary. I'm not talking about possession, but, but we're being influenced by energies in our space, and that started when people were in the womb. And so let's say somebody's in the womb and their mother or their father or somebody is really, really anxious. Well, the spirit of the fetus knows, uh, A, they, they often you know, are doing this out of love, but they also know that if the giants are in trouble, they're in big trouble. So often we start absorbing the energies from our parents that they're having trouble handling. Mm -hmm. And what happens is you can get somebody who's 50 years old going, I'm anxious. I've always been anxious. I don't know why I'm anxious. I do meditation and I, I can calm down and, you know, and I do NLP and I can handle it. But I, I'm just anxious person. That's just my DNA. And a lot of times, most of the time, what we'll find is that they've absorbed anxiety energy from other people. And because it's somebody else's energy, you can't heal it. You can handle it. You can suppress it. You can do things with it, but you can't heal it. And in energetic NLP, people learn how to release it. So it's just not there anymore. And a lot of any strong emotion or pattern that people have that they've worked on and they just can't, maybe they make it better, but they can't really heal it or get rid of it. It's probably mostly not their energy, which is why they're having a problem. So I know you're familiar with parts work and in NLP, we work with a the different aspects of the unconscious mind and, and refer to them as parts. And 
very often they're they're creating internal conflicts and we work to resolve those well when you do when you add in energy work Sometimes when you drain out the energy that isn't uh, the person's, sometimes the part is gone. Mm. So, so in NLP, we'd always be trying to get, you know, work it out in a dialogue with other parts of you. But sometimes like when we drain the energy, the parts are just gone. And, and if you had worked out this internal compromise, it's inauthentic because part of it's just not you. It's programming. And it may sound odd to people that energy can contain emotions and programming, but the only way that human beings can communicate is through energy. You know, that's how people are listening to us right now. Even if we were in the same room, we move our mouths and our tongues and our lips. It vibrates molecules in the air. It goes through the bones in our ears. It gets, you know, changed into neurochemical information. And then the brain interprets that back into what we call sounds. So all information transfer is, is energetic. Mm -hmm. and, and it's funny, sometimes people go, I don't know if I believe that energy can have emotions. And I'll go, have you ever been to a sporting event? And, and even the most straight-laced newscasters, the energy of the crowd is amazing, you know, because yeah. they feel it, you know. And um, nowadays when people have huge TVs and great sound systems, they still will go to a, a bar or a pub or, or to a game or to a concert or in person, even though Often you can actually hear it better at home, but um, but you don't get the energy of the crowd in the same way. Right, right. I was just thinking of doing an NLP like online course versus live. The, the energy of sitting with someone is is vastly different than sitting online. Although you know, if if someone can't come to a live training, they should absolutely learn it online. It's not to discredit learning online. The, the learning will happen. But I like being in person for the energy, for the experience of f picking up and feeling the people in the room. There's there's something um, there's just something very unique to that. Uh, so I know exactly what you're talking about. I think that's normally true, and I and I do think in person live is you know the the gold standard. That's the best. But in the kind in energetic NLP, when we have people online we connect them energetically. We create mm. energy spaces. So um, most of the work I do with people is remote work, 99% of it. And I, I work with people all over the world and they feel the energy. And so I, I teach my students how to create. So when three of them are working like through a Zoom call, uh, they're not just on video, they're connecting energetically. They're in the energy space together. And while it's, you know, I wouldn't say it, it's, as good as being in person, it's pretty darn close. It's it's amazingly close. Could you connect with me or with the audience to do some change work today? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Like as an, uh, I I don't know if you can connect with people that are going to be listening to this in the future, if and 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 give some advice to all the people listening, if that's something that is in your wheelhouse. Oh yeah, because that would be really cool. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll do that in a minute. This, <clears throat> what I'll just explain to people is that um, when people listen to the recordings uh, when I'm doing energy work, they they access the energy. How that works is an interesting story. But in some ways, the energies exist outside of linear time. Mm -hmm. And so when if if people are listening to this as a recording, if they pretend it's happening right now while they're listening to it, the energies will be there. And, you know, people tell me they use recordings that I made 10 years ago and stuff all the time, and they feel the energies. In fact, uh, one man, I knew him through business things, and he wasn't sure about all this energy stuff, but he was listening to one of my recordings on his phone while he was doing other work. And he goes, I wasn't even paying any attention, really. I, you know, he started doing something on his computer. He goes, all of a sudden, tears are coming to my eyes and I'm shaking and I'm releasing all this stuff. And he goes, and he was, he goes, I was so not expecting anything to happen. So it wasn't like placebo because he was, he was sure nothing was going to happen. And so, you know, we, uh, we'll connect people and we can connect people who, who aren't on the call yet. Um, and again, how that works in, in the advanced energetic NLP programs, we, we work a lot with time and working outside of time, which is very, very interesting. But, um, and I want people to know 
for energetic NLP to work, it, it's not a faith healing. You don't have to believe anything. You know, people can block the work. So if they're going, this can't work, you know, they could block it. But if they're going, oh, I don't necessarily believe this, but, you know, okay, I'm open to finding out, it, you know, that's all the more permission they need to give. So it's, uh, they don't have to believe it is or isn't going to work. If anybody's listening to this while they're driving, I'm going to ask them to either pull over or turn it off because I will start working with the energies and the energies are designed to make you go inward for deep transformation. And that's not how you want to be when you're driving. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. The other day I was working with a client and I started to do some some shifting with her while, while she was driving and she had to pull over. I'm like, okay, maybe I shouldn't be doing this work with people because she's like uh, everything uh, was like the the world was spinning around her. Like she was having a very physiological yeah. reaction to the to the change work. I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's let's park and then we'll pick this yeah. back up. <laughs> yeah, and like people, you know, will they would they get away with it? Probably, but it's really a bad. It's like driving really really fast when it's raining. You'll probably get away with it, but you may something horrible could happen. So like not worth it. Um, so there's a couple ways. First, I can just run some energy for people. And then if you want, I can, I can, um, teach them a technique. Oh, sounds great. Okay. So I'm going to describe these as visualizations. It doesn't matter whether people consciously see it or not. I know some people don't visualize well. I, I used to be a terrible visualizer and it doesn't matter if you just pretend you're seeing it then as we say in, in NLP, your unconscious mind will see it and, and that's perfectly fine. So the, the only way to really block this is if people are going, am I doing it right? Is it working? So <laughs> I just ask people, just have whatever experience you're having without judging it. And then later on, you will or won't notice it, some differences. And some of the most powerful energy work I've ever received from like world famous healers I didn't always feel it that much in the moment. And sometimes it was more like an hour later going like, oh, okay, something happened. <laughs> you know. Um, so a long-winded way of saying it doesn't matter if they feel it or not. It doesn't matter if they think profound thoughts or mundane thoughts. It, it doesn't matter. Um, the only thing that matters is that they give permission for their inner wisdom and spirit to be in charge. And when somebody's inner wisdom and spirit are working together, it forms something that we call your miraculous self, your miraculous self. And that's when the, a person's inner wisdom and spirit are working together to guide them and help them manifest their life and to heal them and nurture them. And you might think it would be automatic that your inner human wisdom and your spirit are collaborating, but it is not. <laughs> and this is different than the high self. So people try to mush the two ideas together. Your, your high self just exists. Your miraculous self is kind of like a muscle you may have never used. So you, you have to build it. And the first step is that as a, as a human being, as a conscious being, we have a right to make choices in our lives. So I'd like everybody, if they want to just go, okay, I, I'm choosing and giving 100% permission for my inner wisdom and my spirit to collaborate. I'm choosing and giving 100% permission for my inner wisdom and my spirit to collaborate and form a miraculous self or my miraculous self. And then I'd like people just to pretend that there's a giant gold ball of energy and that everybody listening to this conversation is inside of it while this conversation is going on. And then at the end, it will dissolve. And if somebody's listening to this again as recording, the gold ball will form again. And let's imagine this gold ball is filled with gold energy and also amethyst energies. And amethyst energies are the colors you see in an amethyst crystal. They go from lavender to dark purple. And the reason people in energy work use colors is we see different colors because they're different frequencies of energy, different frequencies of light. 
So when we imagine colors and the energy, what again, whether you see them or not, uh, if you just pretend, okay, there's, I'm surrounded by gold and amethyst energy, those are energies that help with transformation, with dissolving blocks and opening up to our authentic selves and our miraculous abilities. So just like people pretend we're all in this giant gold and amethyst ball of energy. And people all over the planet talk about Mother Nature, Mother Earth. Pretty much everybody's felt that when they're like at the beach or out in the woods or someplace in a field. And those energies are, in fact, everywhere. So let's invite that Mother Nature, Mother Earth energy to come into our gold and amethyst ball of energy. And these are energies that are nurturing, healing, energies that love us, energies that acknowledge that you have a right to exist, that you're on the planet because you're supposed to be on the planet. There aren't any extra people on the planet. <laughs> so just let those energies come in. And I'd like everybody to think of one thing in their life that they'd like to have improved. It could either be a problem or it could be an opportunity, but something they'd like enhanced or improved. And this is being recorded, so you can pick something else later. Just pick one thing for now. And then give your miraculous self, your M, 100% permission to be in charge. And again, since your miraculous self is your inner human wisdom working with your spirit, whatever it decides will be what's absolutely right for you at this moment in time. And in energy work, you're never trying to clear all the blocks at once. It can be too big of a shift. So just let your miraculous self choose what blocks the energy that's coming in is going to dissolve and heal? And what of your inner abilities it's going to open up and enhance? And just give your miraculous self 100% permission to identify the blocks for right now and identify what it wants enhanced. Then take a couple easy deep breaths and I'm just going to run the energy for a few minutes and then I'll teach everybody a technique they can do. But right now it's just intention and permission. Intention for your life to be enhanced and permission for your miraculous self to use the energies I'm bringing in to transform your life. Take a couple of easy deep breaths.
Take a couple of easy deep breaths. Sometimes people get very serious about this. The more playful you are, the stronger it'll be. So bring out your playful inner child. And as the energies removing programming and limiting beliefs from your energy field and from your unconscious mind, they're immediately being replaced by your inner wisdom and by insights, knowledge, and wisdom from your spirit. So as any programming gets dissolved, any beliefs get dissolved, they're immediately replaced by your inner wisdom and information, insights, knowledge, and wisdom from your spirit. Okay, hey, now we're going to bring in energies to help you process and integrate that. In this type of energy work, it doesn't finish when we're done. It will go on for days or even weeks of processing, which is a good thing. And I'd like to say to everybody's unconscious minds that after listening to this, if anybody's driving or doing anything that requires safety, I want their miraculous self and their unconscious mind to turn the processing way down, make sure they're grounded, make sure you're safe, make sure you're alert. So grounded, safe and alert. And then when you're sleeping, that's a good time to turn up the processing only to the level that still allows you to sleep well and, and not like all night long but just a portion of when you're sleeping, your unconscious mind can review what we just did in that energy session and your M, your miraculous self will infuse it with your inner wisdom, infuse it with your spiritual information and make it richer and deeper and higher and wider, make it more multidimensional and make it more automatically integrated into your life. And that can happen while you sleep soundly and deeply and wake up feeling refreshed. And so that people can pay a little more attention, it's good to stomp your feet, pat your body, your arms, and your head. How are you feeling, Ashley? I'm feeling very good. <laughs> you didn't tell us to open our eyes, but I'm imagining you want us to open our eyes now. 
Yeah, it, or or not, whatever you want to do. Whatever you want. <laughs> now, if there's time, I can teach people a a, a short, powerful energy process too. Yes, I don't know how we're doing you have time. all the time in the world. Ooh. Yeah, this is that. a long show. My listeners know that because <laughs> oh, I want great. I want to get some real meat. I want to get help my listeners, you know, make the changes they need. So, but I want to tell you my experience. I really felt it. Please. I didn't. I didn't. Okay. You know, I I I'd say I'm the most open minded skeptic. I kind of go into everything <laughs> like I'm open minded, but I'm not believing that anything's like you know because it's it's per right. the perfect way to be placebo effect can't affect me because I'm not going in with like a belief system, but I'm going to be open-minded about it. But I'm also kind of skeptical. So when stuff happens, I'm like, oh, that's a surprise. I wasn't expecting stuff <laughs> to happen. But the first few deep breaths, uh, I started to cry and I felt like, like these tingles, like not painful, but really like pleasurable, mm -hmm. but very intense waves going up my body of tingles as I was um, taking the first few breaths. Well, that's great. Yeah, it was really cool. I, I really did feel it. And I'm really glad you brought that up. And well, I'm, I'm really glad you felt it. And, and I will remind people, it's fine if you don't feel it. And sometimes when it, the energy is going on, people temporarily feel discomfort. And that's like blocks being worked on. And mm -hmm. sometimes that's just the way it shows up. Um, so that's OK if they felt temporary discomfort. Sometimes emotions come up uh, and they uh, and they're coming up to be released. So if people do like you did and just let it flow, that's perfect. If they start going, why am I feeling this? They can trip over themselves. So just let people know, it's just old stuff you're releasing. So you don't have to do anything with it, just let it go. <laughs> Makes total sense. Absolutely. So uh, to teach people uh, this technique, and I, I like any one technique, this is just a tiny portion of what's possible, and it's a super powerful technique. I, I, many people who this is the only thing I've taught them and told me they it's really made a difference in their lives. So it's a a little tiny piece of what's possible, but it's a, and it's a little powerhouse. And the way it works relies on that, to the unconscious mind and, and energetically and spiritually, that with the, in spiritual systems they often go symbol and reality are one. Symbol and reality are one. So if you imagine something means something, your unconscious mind and your spirit will go, okay, I'm, sure, I'll do that. And um, uh, it's something I, I used to use a lot in my NLP work too, that uh, you know, give people a symbol or a metaphor for something to work with. And then all of a sudden it would open up an ability, even though you don't consciously know how it's working. So this technique is for clearing other people's energy and old energies out of our energy field. And so Ashley and anybody who's listening, if you look at your hands right now, imagine what your hands would look like if you have ne you never washed them in your entire life. They'd be coated with all kinds of you know, gunk and stuff. And you would have trouble moving and flexing your fingers because of all the crud on them. And, um, and, and the worst part would be you would think that was you. You would think all that junk was just authentically part of you. You know, genetically, that's what my skin looks like. You know, my hands look like. And then if you fell in a lake and it got washed off, you'd go, you'd look at your real hands and go, what's this? Boy, I can move my fingers. This, this feels better. You know, boy, it doesn't hurt like it did. And in the same way, our energy fields are constantly collecting stuff. Most people would be appalled at how much of the energy in their energy field is not theirs. And, it, and the energy in your energy field doesn't need to be 100% yours because some energies are like food. You know, we're using them. But people tend to have their energy field stuffed with other people's energy. And when you're being intimate with somebody, whether it's an intimate conversation or sexually intimate or any other kind of intimacy, it feels good to to merge energies. But what people don't do is then separate back out. But we also merge energy, energies with people we don't like and with energies that are just around. Um, so we're constantly being affected by energies that aren't authentic to us. And as I mentioned earlier, any emotional state that somebody goes, I, I feel it too often or I handle it really badly and I've worked on it, but I, I, it, it's better, but it's not where I want it to be. 
there's about a 99% chance that a lot of the energy of that isn't yours. And that's why you can't get it where you want it to be. Because we can always deal with our authentic energies. You, you mentioned grief earlier. We can deal with our authentic grief. But when somebody's feeling grief, they tend to pull in other people's grief energy. Mm. And, and other people get triggered by their grief and start releasing their own grief energy. And then all of a sudden you can't handle it. And I think that one of the reasons for road rage is people leave all kinds of energy on, on, on the highways and roads. And a lot of it's frustration, anger, you know, they're in traffic jams. And if somebody starts getting upset when they're driving, sometimes you, you, like, you open up a portal and similar energy just flood in. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden they're crazy and they're, you know, and they're out of control. <laughs> um, it's funny. You should say that. Um, yeah. I had, a uh, on the show before a man named Eric Thornton, he's actually, um, been on the show a few times and he's a, mm. a local uh, spiritual healer. Um, mm. he talks to angels and guides. He can just like his whole life since he was born, he could just see them and talk to them. He thought everyone could until he realized <laughs> he's different. But um, I've I've interviewed him in person. I've met him a few times, so it's been really uh, interesting. He seems like a to totally normal guy. He was a carpenter for twenty years, but when he was twelve mm. years old, without any carpenter experience, he's uh, angels and guides or whoever talks to him um, told him how to remodel his mom's kitchen. So that's what started. He had no formal training and he became a, a finished carpenter, very good at it. Um, so that's, he, he's, he's that kind of, he's at that level where his gifts Fantastic. were, he, he turned on and, but he, um, uh -huh. he's like, and, and like you said, everyone ha can tap into these gifts and he just, um, uh, he's just been working on it for 50 years. So he's, you know, got more, uh, mm -hmm. I guess more experience, but he said something very similar. Like what you just said reminded me, he said that like an, if someone has anger, like unresolved anger, they'll, it's almost like a magnet on their chest. And then they pull in all this other mm. anger energy until there's like all these magnets sort of built up on them. Um, all this, uh, anger kind of drawn to them because that's mm -hmm. the energy that they're holding on to or that they haven't processed or that they're sort of projecting. And so an angry person can attract more anger in their life. And he thinks it's almost like a mechanism in order for us to heal it. If we're not going to heal it when it's a whisper, maybe we'll heal it when it's like a two by four right. hitting us over the head. And yeah. so those who are sad will like attract all this sadness and all these other people that have sadness until they finally like wake up and, and heal it. And same with anger. It's like, it'll just compound until we finally address it until we finally wake up and address it we have this sort of he just sees it as this people just suck in and pull in an energy that's complements the energy they're holding on to so it's it's similar what you said that uh -huh. we, we sort of if we're experiencing some road rage or some frustration on the road that because there's other people around us will kind of pick up on it and it'll amplify when i was a kid um I f would have tummy aches all the time from my parents fighting. I, they'd be in another mm -hmm. room and sometimes I wouldn't even know they're fighting. Like I couldn't hear them, but I would, I would get very intense feelings in my body. Like I was walking on eggshells and anxiety and my, my tummy would be in a clench and I'd feel like I had to h almost hide um, because of the amount of anger coming off of both of them. It was very scary and I didn't know as a child how to deal with it. But now looking back, I can see I was really picking up on their energies mm -hmm. that they were putting off. And um, and that's, that, you know, and my body was physiologically reacting to the energies they were putting off. Wow. Yeah, that, exactly. And when you, what you can learn to do what I've been taught and I've included and as a big part of energetic NLP is, is we would say everybody's the sovereign of their own energy field. So you hear all this stuff about energy vampires and people doing this and that. And I, I understand how people see it that way. But what I was taught and what I found to be true is we're all the sovereigns of our own energy field. And for another energy to stay stuck in there, it has to hook into something of ours. Mm -hmm. Now, now you know, it could be unconscious. It could be karma. It could be spiritual contracts. It could be energetic programming. So we start looking at that as a gift. It's it's like help. It, it's similar to what he, um, the healer you were talking about was saying. You can use it to go, okay, what in me is that hooking into? And then if I heal what it's hooking into, not only can I release that energy, but my life gets better because I've, I've cleared what's authentic. And there's a, 
a lot of amazing energy workers who, who don't know about that. And so I'll get a healing from somebody and I feel fantastic later, but it's like the old joke, a half hour you're hung, later, you're hungry again, because they, they haven't gotten the, the Velcro, the hooks that were in me. So eventually something hooks again. <clears throat> so in energetic and OP, we're always going, okay, if I've absorbed that person's anger, what is it in me that's allowing that? And then how do I heal and change that? I really love this philosophy. Uh, and I can see where the NLP comes into play because yeah. it has them shift to personal responsibility. It has them shift to be, instead of being the victim of these energies happening to them, they're now shifting to being at cause in their world and being 100% responsible for their change, which then empowers them. Yeah, you know, without, it, it's, a, it's a great story, but I'm going to make it just really short. I, I used to go to a spiritual center in Brazil and, People often go, oh, if I open up to energies, what if I connect with something negative? And, uh, and, and there's simple things to do around it. But, but this one time I connected with the most, I don't tend to use the word evil, but that would be a good description of this energy. It was really intense and malevolent. And, um, and it, it actually entered my dreams. And when I woke up, it was still there. I was, it was really there. And I was kind of half awake, so I'm doing you know things to clear my energy, and it's getting better, but it's not really working. And finally, I got awake enough to just kind of in my mind go, "I'm the sovereign of my energy field. You're irrelevant to me. You you can be in my room or not, but I don't I don't care because you have no power." And as soon as I did that, you know, it was gone. Um, and because my resistance to it and my giving it power was giving it power, and as soon as I I recognized like. I'm not giving you any power. You're you're in my space. You know? It's like, and you, you don't even have to leave because you don't have any power here. You're irrelevant to me. I mean, I, and I literally thought that to the energy, like you're irrelevant. I don't care. You know, be here, don't be here. What do I care? Um, and then it just, um, and like I say, so many people are afraid they're going to run into something really negative, but those things don't really have power. You said that it comes back to very NLP viewpoint. It's like, you know, if something's having power in my space, then okay, what in me is letting it? And then how do I heal and change that? And, it, and, and usually it's pretty easy. <laughs> I love it. That's, that's such a great reframe. And it hundred percent puts the power back in the person's corner. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yep. Excellent. Well, I'm really excited to learn this yeah. technique. So the technique's really simple. So, People put their put their am put their miraculous self in charge, and there's no effort involved. It, it the more playful people are, and if they just pretend it's happening, they don't have to believe it's happening. Just pretend it's happening, and, and it will work. Um, and for this, we use the analogy or the metaphor of a magnet, because almost everybody played with a magnet when they were a child, and so. Your unconscious mind, your conscious mind knows a magnet is this thing that has powerful energies. And if you held up the magnet and held up a pin, all you have to do is let go of the pin and the magnet will pull it out. You'll pull it over to, to the magnet. So this is wired into us. So I'd like, and, and we're gonna do in this process, we're gonna use four magnets in all. So I'd like people to go, okay, I'm putting my miraculous self in charge of what happens. And then set your intention and give permission for your miraculous self to go through your energy field right now and identify energies that aren't yours, aren't in present time, and that energies that your miraculous self wants you to let go of right now. So not, not saying everything, we're not doing it perfectly, just your, give your miraculous self permission to go, okay, what energies do I want out of the energy field right now? And then imagine a magnet out in front of you, at least six meters, um, uh, 18, I'm sorry, at least let's say nine feet, three meters out in front of you. And then give your miraculous self permission to use that magnet to release energies that aren't yours from the front of your body and from the front of your energy field. And your energy field goes completely around your body in all directions. Just imagine right now that any energies your miraculous self wants you to let go of are leaving your energy field and going to the magnet. 
and you don't need to know what they are. I like to entertain myself. I see little squiggles and shapes and clouds and stuff going off, but that's just because it amuses me. And if anybody feels any tug of war going on with an energy, leave that alone for now. Just whatever just comes right off. And then you drop that magnet into the earth and the earth recycles the energy. And that means it either just turns it into pure energy or if it's somebody else's energy and it should go back to that person, it goes back to them. And just let the earth figure that out. So that's the first magnet. Put a second magnet high above your head, at least nine feet, uh, three meters above your head. And it's gonna clear the top of your energy field. And again, your energy field is in you and around you. So it's gonna start at your shoulders, go through your neck. A lot of energy is stuck in our heads, inside of our heads in the forehead, in the back of the skull, in the scalp, and going up above about nine feet, three meters, because there's chakras or energy centers that go up that high above the body or higher. And just give your miraculous self permission now to use the magnet to release any energies from that whole upper part of your energy field in your head into the magnet. And then drop that magnet into the center of the earth and let the energies be recycled. The third magnet is my favorite. Put it behind you. And if there's somebody sitting you behind you, don't put it in their lap, put it behind you. And it's gonna clear the back of your body and the back of your energy field. And a lot of energies literally hide behind our back. You know, your head, your neck, your shoulder blades, behind your solar plexus, your abdomen, your hips, your thighs, your knees, calves, feet. Just put your miraculous self in charge and let it release any energy it wants to from the back of your body and the back of your energy field into the magnet. drop that into the center of the earth. And then the last magnet, put that in the earth and let it clear from the base of your spine down through your legs and your knees and your calves, your ankles, your feet, your toes, the soles of your feet, and even going down at least three feet a meter below your feet and all around you. Let that magnet clear the whole bottom half of your energy field. Again, no effort, just whatever comes off easily. And then that energy is recycled. And it isn't just that other people's energy is in, our, is in our energy field. We leave our energy in other people's energy field too. Sometimes we're trying to help them. Sometimes we're trying to change their minds. Sometimes we're mad at them. It can be for all kinds of different reasons. Now, if you have very young children, it's appropriate to have a lot of your energy in their space and your miraculous self will figure that out. But let your miraculous self use a golden ball of energy floating high above your head, a golden ball of energy, and let that act as a magnet and let your miraculous self use that to retrieve your energy from wherever you've scattered it. Past, present, future, at work, in your automobiles, on planes, cars, buses, other people's homes, your home, wherever you've scattered it. And just let your miraculous self be in charge. And if some of your energy is in somebody else's energy field trying to help them, your miraculous self will replace your energy with earth and universal energies, which will help them and be even better for them. So let all the energy that your M wants to retrieve come into the gold ball.
and then your M, your miraculous self, inspects the energy in the gold ball. And some of that energy may have come from your energy field, but not be authentically your energy. So any energy that isn't authentically yours goes down into the earth to be recycled. Your authentic energy gets cleaned up, made sparkling, gets activated. And then your authentic energy comes back down and fills your body and energy field. And we never want to leave empty spaces in our energy field. So let the gold ball send gold energy in, around, and through your body, filling up any space that's left with gold energy. Gold energy is a, a very neutral, very spiritual energy. You can use it almost kind of like food. And then go ahead and stomp your feet, pat your body. Open your eyes. <laughs> Open your eyes, yes. And it, it can help to like look around wherever you are and look at like what are fine details and what you can see and hear and if you're sitting in a chair, what do you feel? Can you wiggle your toes and feel them? And I'll just help ground everybody. And I'll remind everybody that after this, uh, this uh, uh, podcast, if you're doing anything that requires safety, your unconscious mind and your M will make sure you're automatically safe and alert. So how was that for you, Ashley? I was very cool. The first magnet, I felt like my skin on my cheeks were being pulled. <laughs> I could feel stuff being like pulled out of me. Oh, it was it was like it was a feeling of tugging, pulling out. Mm -hmm. And I was like leaning forward like I could feel it. And then um, the the next one, the magnet above, I was like, oh, this is this is so hypnotic because my I felt like my entire my my back straightened up. I became a foot taller sitting here like my whole it was like a nice. um, uh, uh, what do they call it in UFOs when they attract like a beam, right? Pulling oh, uh -huh. me. Yeah, <laughs> it was like the yeah. magnet was like this, that that uh, special uh, tractor beam pulling me up. And uh, it was a very cool feeling. But then the second you said there's energies you have out there in other people, and all of a sudden it was like I felt whole again. Like it just, it happened like, and it just pulled Ooh. all my energy back to me that I've had scattered everywhere. And it was just in that instant. And it just, it was like I was at 25% battery life and all of a sudden I got a supercharge <laughs> and I just got, it got all sucked back to me and I felt it. I was like, whoa. And then right before you said gold energy filling your like ball, mm -hmm. my, my mind already did that. Like I just felt like gold ball around me, go <laughs> complete the shield. Got it. You know, fill the shield with gold. Got it. And then you said that I was like, okay, good. <laughs> We're doing this right. But no, it felt amazing. And that's really funny because um, not to comp not to compare you to Eric Thornton, which you are totally, I mean, you guys have your own unique set of skills. Uh -huh. Absolutely. He did, he did talk about this. He said this to me specifically that I, I put my energy and that for everyone that we, like when we interact, mm -hmm. we kind of leave, sometimes leave that aka cord or that energy with someone and to, um, and to remember to pull it back. Cause he noticed that with my, every time I do a podcast, I'd put all mm -hmm. my energy into it and then, you know, hang up Skype and, and all my energy was like left out there. Right. And it was just kind of draining. And, and, and so I noticed that when I in just, it, and for those who don't know how to direct your energy, it's just intention when you mm -hmm. bring awareness and attention. So I'd like pull my energy back and I was like, oh man, that feels so good. Like it would just be a totally different experience for me pulling my energy back after completing an interview versus leaving it out there. Um, I'd feel totally drained and exhausted after an interview versus feeling very uplifted. So it, you're really confirming this for me, this idea that we can exercise just like we bathe every day, mm -hmm. right? And wash our hands that we can exercise energetic um, health habits to keep sanitary. Well, um, everything you're saying is, is so perfect because um, in energetic NLP, we do have like a five minute twice a day thing that people can do. And one big part of it is the magnets that, 
and, and just doing the magnets a couple, you know, like in the morning when you get up before you go to bed, uh, it's like, I, I'm not a morning person, but if I, when I wake up in the morning, I'll do my magnets and then it's like, hello world, you know, <laughs> and, you know, and the magnets and the gold ball and I sleep better. And if I do it before I go to bed at night, um, people can do it. Let's say they have an important presentation or meeting or sales call, or you're going to go see your family. If you do it ahead of time, you'll be much more resourceful. If you've gotten triggered, if you do it afterwards, you'll be much more resourceful. Say it's it's fantastic around family. Um, I mean, it, for most of us, even if your family's fantastic, they just tend to trigger us. And it, <laughs> you know, I'll teach people this, and it, um, it, it and it makes the holidays stuff much better. You know, with with your kids, um, with uh, anybody you're in relationship with. It, it's a handy dandy Ginzu knife. You can use it for everything. And <laughs> and I love that you were doing things before I said it, because that's what happens in the programs a lot is it, as people get more open energetically like you are, they'll often go, I was doing everything right before you said it. And I go, it's great. That's perfect. You know, um, and so let me review the steps for people. It's really simple. So the main thing is you put your miraculous self in charge. And again, that's your inner wisdom and spirit working together, your miraculous self or just your M. You, you're not trying to clear all the energies. You, you ask your M to identify what energies it wants you to release right now. And then one magnet's in front of you, release into that, let that magnet go into the earth and let the energy be recycled. One magnet high above your head, Send that into the earth, one magnet behind you, send that into the earth, and then one magnet in the earth that clears from the base of your spine down through your legs and feet, going down at least a, a meter, three feet below your feet and, and your energy field all around you. So that's just those four magnets. And then the, the second part is real simple, a gold ball of energy over your head. And you ask your miraculous self to retrieve your energy from wherever you've scattered it and let it go into the gold ball. And if your M thinks some of your energy, like say particularly with young children and stuff, if, if your M wants to leave some of your energy in somebody else's field, it will do that if that's the right thing. Otherwise, it will replace your energy with earth and universal energies, which will be better for them. As the energy comes back into your gold ball, it gets cleaned up. Any energy that's not actually authentically you goes into the earth. Your authentic energy comes down, is beamed down into your body and energy field. And you never want to leave energy spaces. So then you imagine gold energy just coming in and filling any space that's left in your body or energy field. And gold energy is a neutral spiritual energy that we can use for all kinds of things. So it's not like having another person's energy. And um, that's it. I love it. Well, I'm so thankful that you came here to teach us this today. I feel really good. I feel like I just took Yay. an energetic shower. feel really good. I hope everyone feels the same. Um, I want to make sure listeners know how they can learn more from you. So your website is energeticnlp.com. You, we're going to make sure that everything, all the links are in the show notes of today's podcast, learntrail.com, including the link to you on Facebook, because I know you do lots of Facebook lives. So for those who right. want to uh, continue learning from you on a on a somewhat daily basis, they can do that on Facebook Live. And um, tell us about your programs. Like what, um, tell us about your in-person programs. Tell us about your, your online programs, just so we know what there is. Great. Um, I'd love to. Um I have a number of different programs. So sometimes I do one and two day workshops um, that if people are on my mailing list, of course, I'll hear about it. And I do a lot of webinars online. And again, if as people are experiencing now, the energies work no matter where you are. I mean, have, I'll be work. I'm in California, I'll be working with people in India, you know, all over the world. And it, it, it works just the same as if we were in the same room. Um, so some of the work I do, I, it, it's funny that you, you were talking about feeling all clean and sparkly because some of the work I do, I call energy spas, energetic NLP energy spas, <laughs> because a number of my old clients, and I still haven't figured out if they talk to each other because these are all separate conversations, they would go, well, we love the training programs, but we love 
the one and two day workshops, it's like going to the spa. We don't have to think or work hard. We just get our energy, you know, fixed, <laughs> not fixed, but it worked on. And um, um, so everything I do, there's a mixture of the energy spas with, um, but then there, there's concepts and training. And I, I teach people processes like the magnets that are really easy to use that they can do on their own. I have several online programs where that are a mixture of recorded videos and audios online plus group coaching sessions. And I was a little skeptical of how those would work, but they've worked fantastically well. And I have several uh, different programs on that. Um, one is to strengthen the connection with the miraculous self. So there's more guidance and support. Uh, another one is offering your gifts to the world, which is to help people in their careers or businesses be out there more. And, and there's several others. Um, people who want to work intensely with me, I have a, something called the Transformation Accelerator Program, which uh, is online, but it's, you know, real time. And they do get recordings and, and, and a whole membership site to work with too, but then we do one-on-one -on -one sessions together. But my absolute favorite thing in the world, we, we call it the M Club for Miraculous Self. And uh, it's a year-long program where I, I used to do all these like, level one, level two, level three, level four, <clears throat> level five programs. They were all four day programs and it worked really well, but it, it always felt a little, not quite out of integrity, but a little off to me because I really didn't think it should be divided like that. You know, that if somebody, you know, realizes that, that energetic NLP is for them, I want them to not to get little tiny pieces. I want them to get the whole thing of what's possible, which, I mean, it's endless, but I want them to get to a, an amazing point. So I've started doing a year-long program, which is a mixture of three retreats plus um, monthly online classes and sessions and energy spas. And um, that's called the M Club. And anybody who's interested in that, um, we can have a link to where they, they would fill out a, a a questionnaire that people find very helpful that helps them clarify where they are in their life, where they want to be. And then uh, they would have a phone conversation with me or, or somebody really advanced in energetic NLP, probably me, but it, it could be uh, some other people that work with me that are really good. And we'll, we go over it and we do an energy reading of them and they it can help them decide if any of the energetic NLP programs are a really good fit for them. And, like I said, that this M Club, some of the people in it were in the old design of the level one, two, and three, and they're just um, he he says modestly they're they're thrilled, amazed at the the level of progress because having it one continuous program, the momentum builds and builds and builds and builds and builds, and so and the and the energy of the group is building, and um, it, it, they're just. They're all doing amazing work, even the people at the beginning who thought they, they, they weren't going to be able to do it. And the other thing is we, we form a community that is unlike it's a bit similar to the NLP community, but kind of on steroids. So <laughs> people make these incredible friendships. Um, but like I have really good friends that if I'm having a problem in my life or an opportunity, they'll cheer me on or they'll go pour art. Um, but my my energetic NLP friends and community, they'll work with my energy, they'll coach me, they, you know, they have these amazing skills. And um, like right now, actually, the one one of us is in the hospital um, in, in a little bit, you know, the as you mentioned before, cancer can come up real suddenly and boom, you know, stage four and having to have surgery and all of this. And we're all working with her energetically, um, you know, uh, before the surgery, we, we worked with the doctors in the operating room, clearing the energies. We're working with her in the recovery and we'll continue to work with her. And we've had other people in the group who've had life threatening diseases and and other serious problems. And, and they go, the support that they got from the group was completely transformed the experience like one woman, they, they thought her husband was going to die. I mean, the doctor at one point said he is going to die. And 
she was using her own skills from energetic NLP, but we were all like supporting her. And, um, and he's now running 10 Ks. He's fine. But, but she was amazing. I mean, uh, through the whole thing, I mean, she was just solid and grounded and able to handle whatever came up. I mean, it was, it was so impressive. And, and she credited using energetic NLP, but also all of our support. And on the lighter side, you know, sometimes people, we have a private Facebook group and they might put in, um, oh, I have a job interview or I'm giving a presentation or I have a date, you know, and people will work with the energy. So it isn't just problems, it's opportunities too. And um, uh, having that kind of community is mind boggling. And, and it, the, the security and the support and the fun it adds to life because it because a lot of people are really fun too. Um, and the thing that's even great is often they'll set up, you know, they'll get on the phone with one another or on the internet, but, but if they can't, somebody will just put it on Facebook and then you start seeing the responses come in. Oh, I worked on this and this. And somebody goes, yeah, I worked on this and, you know, and, and do this, do that. So it's, it's, it's really phenomenal. That's wonderful. Can you, would you be comfortable sharing with us the price or, you know, sort of more details around that? You know, they, they range from things that are free to really inexpensive to, um, uh, well, the M Club can and can be as much as 13000 for a year program, though there's different discounts um, that, that people would be able to get. Um, but that's the most expensive program. Some of the five week and stuff programs are, are more in the $900 range. The weekend, like I'm doing a weekend workshop in London. Um, well, I was going to say this coming weekend, but depends <laughs> on people are listening. I, I do a lot of work in London and, um, uh, it's, um, uh, $250 or something, you know, so it really depends. It's all over the place. And I, I do lots of free webinars because I, I, it's important to me that everybody can get help. Mm -hmm. And, um, but with the M club, sometimes people go, Oh, $13,000. Um, but they get a ton. I mean, there's a, every month there's a, a three and a half hour online class. There's an hour and a half class. There's uh, an energy spa session. There's a blessing. Um, you know, there's the three retreats. I mean, that, that it, it, they get a lot along with a whole online membership site where everything's recorded and they can 24 seven, you know, if they need a particular thing, they can use it. Um, so it, I, I'm really proud of it. It's, mm -hmm. uh, I used to be, a before this program, I was afraid to do a year long program. It's like people won't commit. They won't, you know, it's such a big commitment, you know, and, you know, People would actually pay more to, to do five four day programs, you know, you know, or uh, th than to do the whole thing. But, you know, it's just easier in people's minds. And I finally I got inspired by one of my mentors, a woman named Lisa Sasevich, that to like go, you know, she said, what, what do you to get the transformation people that you really want them to have? So, I mean, I can give a talk and people can get transformation, but. But to get what I really want them to have, I, I went, OK, if I have them for a year, they're going to I'll open their abilities to make, you know, they'll be in an amazing place in the year. And I decided, OK, it's a year program. I don't care if it's the most marketable or uh, like one of my colleagues was going, why don't you make it six months? Then it's less money and people will commit more easily. And I went, that's a great idea. And it's a year program. <laughs> it's like because you really want to help people. And that's what you see is working. Yeah, I, in a year, and and I'm so glad that I did because we're just finishing up the first year of it, and um, um, and they were all in a great place in the six months, but they're in a way better place now, and um, and they're just every day they're they're moving, and um, and I realized I want them to get this incredible life transformation, and, and as I mentioned earlier, what's what's interesting about it, and as you know that even though they're really changing because they're, they're, they're being who they really are, both this amazing spiritual being they are, but also who they are and personality wise, not all their programming, the changes are very comfortable mm -hmm. because it just feels right. It's like, Oh, this is, a, it, it's kind of like if you've ever gotten really good body work 
it feels different to stand and move, but it feels right. You know? Right. That makes sense. But I like that you have a ton of free stuff oh, you, yeah. and you have a lot of very affordable few hundred dollar, you know, experiences, yep. both in person and online. And so people can, people can start where they're comfortable and move and move from there. And, and if those who want to jump in and transform their life in a whole year working with you, then they can do that too. I, I really, yeah. I like, I like your format. That's very cool. You, you mentioned that there were some specials. Is there a special that you would be able to give our listeners or is there a special coupon code or something that you can um, provide the listeners? Yes, I, I will get you a coupon code. Um, um Great. I Maybe. love using the coupon code LTH. So if you can use that, yeah. uh, that would be wonderful. I, I, I try to help all my listeners uh, get some kind of savings uh, for jumping in because one of the I get a lot of great feedback from my listeners. One is listeners say that they'll actually listen to an episode two or three times and take notes. Mm -hmm. um, so I started to have the episodes transcribed um, and then some people say that they can't believe how many things they've bought or, you know, how many books and programs and, and they love it because they're transforming their life. But they're, uh -huh. they're like, they're like, I can't believe it. Now I own a sauna and a water purifier <laughs> and, you know, and they just go down the list. And it's funny because everything that I recommend, I also have in my home that that's helped my health too. So I only recommend what I believe in, but when it comes to a guest um, sharing their programs. I love for guests to give discounts. Um, since my listeners are so proactive and will join you, it'd be great if you could, um, you could help them in that way. So coupon code LTH, thank you so much for giving a, um, a discount, uh, special to my listeners. Cause I know that thank they're you. very proactive and will, um, and would love to learn more from you. And I'll, I'll figure out the exact discount on other things, but for the M Club, I, I would give them a $2,000 discount for being one of your listeners. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that gift to them. And I know that, um, that they'll get a lot of, they'll get a lot out of working with you. So it's a great win-win. Art, we could talk for hours. Thank you so no. much for coming on the show. This has been wonderful. Is there anything left unsaid from today? Is there anything that you'd like to make sure that you say to wrap up today's interview? Yeah, just a couple of things. One, again, that everybody has miraculous abilities so that anybody who feels a draw to developing them, just know that you can do it. it it's um, like anything else. There'll be certain areas that will be more natural or a better fit, but everybody can do miraculous things. And the other is that one of my goals is that people not just know intellectually, but really know in their body that that they are, in fact, a, a vast, beautiful, powerful being. And to me, the goal in life is to keep manifesting more and more of that in my life. And that's what I want for people in my programs to to really get that, like what they recognize as them is just a small portion of an amazing, vaster being. And the more of that that you manifest and embody the more miraculous and incredible and joyful your life gets wonderful i wish that for all those who are listening that they have an even more miraculous and beautiful life filled with joy and transformative experiences and i i know that by uh, l learning more from you will definitely accomplish that thank you again for coming on the show you're welcome back anytime you want to come and i'd teach. love it yes we'd love to have you back thank you so much well thank you this is fantastic and and you know what you're do doing with your show is such a gift to people so i, I really want to honor that and keep it up <laughs> Hello, True Health Seeker. Have you ever thought about becoming a health coach? Do you love learning about nutrition and how we can shift our lifestyle and our diet so that we can gain optimal health and happiness and longevity? Do you love helping your friends and family to solve their health problems and to figure out what they can do to eat healthier? Are you interested in becoming someone who can uh, grow their own business, support people in their success? Do you love helping people? You might be the perfect candidate to become a health coach. I highly recommend checking out 
the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. I just spent the last year in their health coaching certification program and it really blew me away. It was so amazing. I learned over a hundred dietary theories. I learned all about nutrition, but from a standpoint of how we can help people to shift their life and shift their lifestyle to gain true holistic health, I definitely recommend you check them out. You can Google Institute for Integrative Nutrition or IIN and give them a call or you can go to learntruehealth.com slash coach and you can receive a free module of their training to check it out and see if it's something that you'd be interested in. Be sure to mention my name, Ashley James, and the Learn Your Health podcast because I made a deal with them that they will give you the best price possible. I highly recommend checking it out. It really changed my life to be in their program and I'm such a big advocate that I wanted to spread this information. We need more health coaches. In fact, health coaching is the largest growing career right now in the health field. So many health coaches are getting in and helping people because you can work in chiropractic offices, doctor's offices, you can work in hospitals, you can work online through Skype and help people around the world. You can become an author, you can go into the school system and help the, the your local schools shift their uh, programs to help children be healthier. You can go into senior centers and, and help them to shift their diet and lifestyle to best support them in their success and their, their health goals. There's so many different available options for you when you become a certified health coach. So check out IAN, check out the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, mention my name, get the best deal, give them a call and they'll give you lots of free information and, and help you to uh, see if this is the right move for you. Classes are starting soon. The next uh, round of classes are starting at the end of the month. So you're gonna wanna call them now and check it out. And if you know anyone in your life who would be an amazing coach, please tell them about it. Being a health coach is so rewarding and you get to help so many people. Are you looking to optimize your health? Are you looking to get the best supplements at the lowest price? For high quality supplements and to talk to someone about what supplements are best for you, go to takeyoursupplements.com and one of our fantastic true health coaches will help you pick out the right supplements for you that are the highest quality and the best price. That's takeyoursupplements.com. Takeyoursupplements.com. That's takeyoursupplements.com. Be sure to ask about free shipping and our awesome referral program.